Hello, my name is Dimitar from EH Studio Design Academy. Welcome to another video in which we'll cover architectural sections. So we'll start with a theater. This is the inside of the theater. And we'll essentially create a box that cuts half of it. So we'll use the Boolean modifier with the different set. And once we have one element cut by the box, we we'll select all the elements in the scene except the box itself. Make sure that the Boolean modifier element that's already been cut is selected last so it's active and then we press Ctrl L link modifiers. Next we'll start adding thickness to all the different elements within our model. We'll do this one by one just because some elements actually need to get moved to, to the right place or slightly adjusted in order for this to work to look okay. So yeah, we always do these sort of little modif modifications with the model when, when we're looking at a specific view and we make the model work as good as it can for that view. Next, we're going to set a camera and the purpose of the camera is to show the spaces in the best manner possible. With these kinds of sections, it's not only important to show the interiors, but the most important element is actually showing the relationship between all the different spaces. Now we're ready to add some basic materials. And the material we're rendering in Blender internal, in case you haven't noticed. And the only thing we're adding to the material is a bit of mirror effect, a bit of reflection, which in Blender internal, yes, it's called mirror. So we leave the opacity of the mirror to 0.7. We add a Fresnel effect with a value of 1.45 and then we adjust the blend to 2 and then we change the mirror color to white. Now it's time to add a few more details to make the section a bit more believable. So I'm going to copy the ceiling up, select a couple of lines which we'll use to create some rails which in a theater usually have these rails that have lights hanging from them. So now that we have the lanes, extrude them up, erase the parts that I don't need. Then we create the wireframe modifier and a triangulate modifier. So they look like trusses. Then I extrude them as a box. That last edge gets collapsed by pressing X, dissolve edges. And now we have our trusses. Then they're moved back into their original place. Now they're starting to look like actual trusses to which we can attach some lights. We won't do that in this tutorial, but nevertheless, we just need to move the lights a little bit, rather the trusses a little bit further down, and perhaps take off a little, a few more faces. And now we're ready to add some people. People are quite simple, they're 2D cutouts that you can get from SketchUp Warehouse, and then just import them into Blender. I have two or three different kinds of people, and then I'm just putting a few in all the different places where there will be a lot of people like the outside, the entrance lobby, the auditorium, the stage, the big black box that we have on top of the proscenium theater and some that are hanging out on the roof. This helps give a scale and relationship between the different spaces in terms of size. And we'll continue to refine the model by adjusting sw slight elements that may be off that I'm noticing along the way. For example, the walls are not meeting in the right place between the floor and the ceiling. In these kinds of simple hidden line drawings, the edges become quite important to be visualized. I found a note called Edge Notes that I use as part of the compositor setup that works good. I've tried freestyle before but without much success. Maybe if you have success I'll be happy to hear how you've done it. And to add the Edge Note, we append it to the scene, we connect it. One important element is that we have to have a within the render layers the normal pass turned on. So then we we drop the edge node into the compositor, we connect it to the existing one, and then we use the edge node. We, there, there's some settings in there that can be adjusted, but we overlay it with multiply on it with a specific color and we use the edge node as a factor to start to display some of those lines. Also as part of the setup, enable full sampling in your render settings. So let's adjust the world settings. We add a bit of ambient occlusion and set it to multiply. Environmental lighting is turned to 1 and it's color white. 
and then there's a slight fall off for the gather ray tracing method that I use of 0.1 and then I also use adaptive QMC. There's a bit of sunlight enabled as well which is set to a very low value with soft shadows just to allow a bit more depth to come through the drawing. So then with some final adjustments and tweaks for the model we're ready to render it and display it. It's been fun and I actually really love doing these kinds of architectural renderings. You know, they, they, they really help develop the project a lot faster because you understand the relationship between the spaces and they look cool. Thank you and I hope you learned something and I'll be happy to hear what you think about this or if you have a different style that you use or how do you display your conceptual architectural models.